I just got it all in here, friends. Not all a whole in here. lot else. <laughs> no, you have, <laughs> and you have so much knowledge when it comes yeah. to anything rowing, green, and we're talking about the royal weddings this Saturday. So how apropos that you are teaching us how to have our own tea garden. Yeah, I think this is a good year, given that there is a royal wedding, to think about doing a tea garden. And yeah. with a tea garden, many of them, it's a classical style. If you look at uh, uh, English landscape design, tea gardens were a big focus of many of the properties. It smells so nice. And they look really good too, yeah. because a lot of the times a tea garden would be focused on using lavender as a border okay. so the border going around with lavender and lavender can be used in tea but also lavender can be used as a sleep aid where you can actually harvest those leaves dry those leaves put them in your pillow so not only are we making a garden that looks good it's also having some function in it sure. as well. Or even the oil, right? You can have, extract the oil. And you said you could have the tea leaves as is or dried inside the hot beverage or a cold one. Or cold. And you know, here's a little example of just some mixed teas. And you can see some of the as are dried. You got some floral confettis that are in there. Beautiful. Some of these have combinations of chamomile. And we all know about chamomile tea. Yeah. Some of them may have lemon. Unfortunately, here we can't grow lemons. But we can. Yeah. what we can do is we can take these teas, steep them, and then we can accessorize. So we can take something like a pineapple mint. This smells so good. It smells exactly like minty pineapple. Amazing. Delicious. It, you kind of put that into a tea or even into an iced tea. Yeah. A great little, but also just even the variegated foliage. So pretty. Word of warning, when it comes to mints, and you can see I have a lot of mint here, yeah. because mint as well, we can use that for mojitos. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's so many, there's a pineapple mint that's right here as well. Mint is an invasive plant that should always be grown in a pot. So that's how you contain it. Yes. Yeah, so if we're going to be doing a tea garden, the mint, I don't want it in the garden. I want it in the pot outside of the garden because if it's in the garden, it's going to run it and overrule that Everything. entire space. If we want to have a great tea garden, we want to make sure it's going to be in sun. Raspberry too. So sometimes you're wondering, why is raspberries in a tea garden? Yeah. A raspberry leaf tea. And for many women out there that have gone through their pregnancy right at the very end when they want to initiate labor, I don't know if there's any real science, but they think raspberry leaf tea. You hear Speeds yeah. it up. I know my wife was drinking a lot of raspberry really? leaf tea at that time. Yeah. Never um, heard of that, Frankie. Then echinacea. But this also grows the fruit, right? That yeah. one does. And you know, we were talking about this yeah. as well. My mom had one and it attracted earwigs. It can attract yeah. some of those, but it needs a space. Okay. So usually raspberries shouldn't really be maybe in the tea garden itself, but you have a raspberry patch. Bush. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. there's many plants that you probably already have in your own garden right now that you can harvest and utilize. This is echinacea, and with echinaceas, you know, we know about all the health benefits of echinacea, also known as a coneflower. So many different variations in bloom. But is it is it this that you're putting in the tea or these little things? We're using the top of the bloom and the bud itself that's in there. This. And for some, we can even harvest the root too and use the root on echinacea. Okay. With passiflora, which is your passion flower. Everybody loves this because it has Pretty. a really wild and wicked bloom. Oh, wow, look Actually, at Actually, the blooms, are, they're not really in flower at this time, but I've got a picture of what the flower looks like there. Really sexy flower. Guys, look how cute. It has yeah. little springs, literally. But for this, for the tea, it's the leaf. So oh. often we can use the flower, but we can use the leaf. But this here is a nice bloom that you can actually have a beautiful garden yeah. and at the same time. And then finally, what you can do to make you and your pets happy? Cat mint. Cat mint, yes. Mm. And this has a beautiful blue bloom. Fantastic. Mm. can be used in teas, but also the cat will love it. <laughs> and you know what? A perfect. Ha perfect. A happy cat. <laughs> Keeps a happy royal family. <laughs> you got it, Frankie. Yeah. This is so perfect. For more information, follow Frankie and send your questions along to him at Frank Virginia. If you start it this weekend, don't expect to have the tea for this Saturday. Not this Saturday, but some of the mints and things like that you could use, you especially if you, if you buy a pot like that. Yeah, you can do that. Darling, here's to a fantastic royal wedding. I only have one Pinkies tea. Pinky's up. I don't know what I'm doing. Thank you, Frankie. More B T T E A after this. Curtsy. Going make the lead. Curtsy. I didn't forget that.